Right, good morning. Fishing trip. Um, just going around to pick Mick up now. Uh, and then we're going to head off to Salisbury. We'll have a fishing site. We're going to have a little look around. We can't get into digs till about 4 o'clock, I don't think. So, uh, nice easy day today. Um, I actually used to fish for Mick's dad. Um, and he only recently passed away. It was in lockdown. He was in his night. And he's a good fisherman. Mick is the most unorthodox fisherman I've ever met in my life. Uh, I look at him sometimes, what do you do? Uh, with his plates and everything, but you know what, he always gets his fish. So, uh, yeah, he doesn't always have to go by the board. Uh, Mick's a good dozen anyway. Right, let's go and pick him up. Right, we're at Mick, and Mick's moaning already. What you got, Mick? Shit? Yeah, fucking Chinese for yeah. breakfast Saturday. Yeah, but he bought it Friday. So we've got to find some Modi in there. Or Guinness, yeah. Right, let's get stuff in. Where's the DM, Mick? This is that bag. It's that's got. Bag. They let go in the coal box. Yeah. Oh dear, fucking hell. We've only got a week, Mick. Is that all? That can all go in the coal box, can't it? Yeah. yeah. Right, we're we going to get packed away. Uh, see you in Salisbury. Go, yeah, see you in Salisbury. Okay, well, we're here. It's a bit of a walk, though. Um, lovely bit of river, though. Plenty of weed in it. But, uh, a little weir pool here. And an old mill. Um, Mick's still struggling with his guts, but. Um, We've sort of deduced that the Chinese may not have been the problem. It was the 10 pints of coal in the head last night. Probably did it, but that's his own fault then, isn't it? Can't blame the China man for that. You blame the Covid, but you can't blame for mixed cups. Uh, yeah, Mick's going to fish this tomorrow, I think. Um, I might creep up behind him later in the day, in the morning. I'm going to do a bit of trotting down there. Um, yeah, look at this old building, though. Eh? Left to rack and ruin, an old water mill. The govins still in there. Yeah, a bit of history, I don't know about it. I don't know when it was built or anything. Um, I mean, it does look like sand cement to be honest, not lying, but it takes a bit of brickwork. A bit of Flemish garden wall bond. But yeah. Right. There's the famous cathedral in the background there. Uh, which we will be oh, we will be taking a look at. It's nine quid to get in. I can afford that. And uh, the Magna Carta's there. We're gonna have a little read of that. I think it's written in old English so. So yeah, um, nice bit of river. Looking forward to it in the morning. It's just a bit of a walk though. Anyway, we've got another stretch. Um, the club I belong to owns just up the road here, so we can have a look at that. We'll have here tomorrow and probably the other stretch the day after. Then we're going sea fishing. So, um, yeah, catch you later. Not sure if you can see that clearly. There's Mummy Swan there with her babies, little goslings. Are they called goslings? Who's that geese? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Bit of nature. Yeah, and here's the downside of modern life. Plastics. Look at that, some of them. How could you lose a boat? I have anyway. Um, I like people throw plastic bottles at that, I don't know. I really don't. Uh, mind you, I've seen a lot worse in some rivers in Spain, I can assure you. It's horrendous here. I really don't care. Come here, mate, we do. Uh, it's called the Hulk and Venison. The haunch off venison, yeah, it's Simmons. Um, as you can see, really old. Uh, the old fireplace there. Yeah. Little bar there, and it goes up here. I don't know if there's anyone in there. I don't want to be filming people. Yeah, there's a few people in there eating, but we'll leave it at that. Um, let me explain. It was built for the Masons who built the cathedral. Uh, and Probably that thing now, I don't know what that is, but I will find out. Um, 
So yeah, it was built for the, it's the outside of the pub. As you can see, I mean, it's very old. Looks like doing a bit of work on it. Um, it was built for the Masons, or three times I've said that, haven't uh, <coughs> And it was obviously, they were earning good money. Uh, spending a lot of time in the pub, I suppose. And there's also lots of prostitutes about as well. Just where there's money, there's prostitutes, aren't there? But what happened was, there's a tunnel which has been filled in from the pub to the uh, cathedral and the priests used to sneak along there uh, and into the pub for their, you know, a little bit of hanky-panky. So, uh, yeah, interesting bit of history. But, um, yeah, very nice pub. Got a new mate, look. You know, I'm fishing down the riverbank and look who's turned up. That's why. That was a bit of the old fishing bait, didn't he? It's so tame. It really is. Well, yes, she is. Look, you can even touch her. Just don't mind it. Oh, well. <coughs> fishing update. I was sat here with the fishing. <laughs> Not a lot. Um, Monday morning we got here. Um, didn't get it that early. I got Tesco. I didn't know it till 6. But we got here about 6.30. Fish till 10. Absolutely awful. Didn't even see a fish. Uh, by then it was too hot. Um, it was never the best time of year to come here anyway, but we did. And then the bailiff come along and uh, reinforced what I already thought, because there was only two fish in here that's been fishing awful. Um, but we're here this evening anyway. Um, have a little go on um, this stretch here. Um, it's not a bad swim and someone's raked it out, so that's okay. The problem what I've got is, Mr. Organised here, I've sorted three reels out for trotting, for fishing here. Um, two centre pins, this is people, people who fish might all know what I'm talking about. Uh, an Abu 5, 506 close face reel, new line, everything on them, <laughs> left them at home. Got here, got no reels, so I had one reel on a spinning rod, um, which I've had to adapt. Uh, but it is, it's, um, it's doing the trick. So. But it's, oh, I'm all out of sorts now. It's like, like turning up the job without your trail, isn't it? And having to borrow one. It just ain't the same, is it? But, uh, right. But, um, yeah, we're going to have a couple of hours here anyway, see what happens. I did see some fish in this swim, actually, just before we left. I think there's some dace, big dace or small chub anyway. But we're here, so we might as well have a go. Right, I'll keep you updated. These here, where's that animal? Look, that chicken. Won't leave me alone. Oh, he's in me bait and everything, look. <laughs> Oh, see you later. I've just seen this sign, it's one of ours. You know, I was a member of this club when I was about 14, and I remember these signs then. I mean, that's how old they are. Um, but if you look, it's grown in, into the tree, it's grown round it. I mean, that's been there years, hasn't it? What a strange thing to happen. What nature does, eh? Morning, Tuesday morning. Uh, day two of the fishing, it ain't going great. Uh, we didn't, I didn't expect it to really. Um, we, we've gone somewhere different um, and I've found this little backwater uh, and I have had a couple of fish out of here but nothing great some small chub it's a lovely spot um, yeah it's got to be better than working I suppose isn't it anything's better than working um, it ain't quite got hot yet it's, it's about quarter past eight in the morning um, but it will do shortly it's a bit of cloud up there um, but we won't be here too long. We're going to trot off, uh, have a look around Salisbury Cathedral today. So, um, unless something fantastic happens here in the next hour or so, um, I'll see you at the cathedral. Well, he's just turned up now. <coughs> We're on fishing. Um, see all that debris out. So that's um, probably going to mess me a bit of fishing up, but I don't care. Wasn't doing any good anyway. Right, it's 11 o'clock. We're back with fishing. I caught a couple of small ones and uh, Mick done his normal. Caught a big one. <laughs> um, it's market day in Salisbury. Uh, we're going to have a quick beer, a quick shower, uh, and then go down and have a look at the market and the cathedral probably. Here's mixed fish there. Not too bad, eh? 
there's Mick. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we'll see you at the market. Right, we're at the market. Um, we're going to get a bit, we'll get on the boat tomorrow, so we're going to get a bit of grub. Um, some pasties or something. Uh, so to take loose, I think we're on the boat for about 10 hours. So we we'll throw most of it up, though. Fruit and veggie. There's bakers here. Has he got any pasties? Biltong, there, look. Jeff Evigan. Bread, isn't it? Right, we'll have to find out bakers. There's a bakers around the corner here, right? We're going to find the bakers. Right, we found the uh, bakers, um, pastries and pasties and pastries and sandwiches, got all that for the boat tomorrow. Um, just sorted tonight's dinner out at the market. Try a bit of tyre. So, uh, we've got large portions of that and uh, we will be digging that later. Um, now we need to find a pub. Oh, there's one over there, look. Where are we going in there? Over there, Mick. Are going to go in there? That pub. Yeah? Yeah, that's it. Come on, have a look, come on. Here's Cherry. Salisbury Market for you. Ah, there's a sunglass place here. I wonder if he's got any things. Hang on. Okay, we're fed and watered. Um, I had a sandwich, it's nice though. Um, Too much for me, but I ate it. Mick went for the gut buster. What was it? Chicken snitchel. Snitchel. Chicken snitchel. salad. And parmesan cheese. And parmesan cheese. We've got fucking old chicken. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've had that. Uh, we've got to kill a bit of time, really. We can't really get on the lash too much. We've got to get on the boat. Before. We're up at four o'clock. We've got to leave at five to get down to pool. Boat's going out at. Uh, what did I say, seven, didn't it? Huh? Boat's going out at seven, isn't it? Oh, yeah. six. No, seven. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're not going to go to the uh, cathedral today. Huh? What? Night time. We've uh, set this pie. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to the cathedral today because yeah, it's a bit of a rush. But um, but we've, yeah. tomorrow's Wednesday. We're going on the boat. Uh, we're back Wednesday night. We're going to be knackered. Um, we're not going to fish Thursday morning. Uh, on the river, but we're going to fish Thursday in, 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 the, in the dark. Architectural day, we're going to So, around. yeah, Thursday's an architectural day. We'll go around and have a look at the cathedral and whatever else in this town, which well, obviously in a bit ain't a lot actually, but there you go. Um, what was I going to say? This is Brooklyn related. Two weeks ago, my old black back was fucked, basically. Um, it happens every now and again. Um, so, I, I've got the diclofenic. Um, Mick gets them from a fellow in Russia. Um, Volt roll diclofenic. These are 100 milligram, like you know, super strength. Uh, I'll do it every now and again, uh, just for a week. And after a week, well, I was on it for two weeks. <laughs> I thought I was 21 again after two weeks. So you can't take them all the time. They're no good for you like that. So I've stopped taking them. Now I'm in fucking bits again. So I've had to get some neurofen and that for tomorrow. Um, so I'm not messing this trip up, you know, they're quite expensive boat trips out at sea, and I love them, they're really good fun, and they are catching at the moment, so, uh, yeah, old age, eh? if I'd have known what it was going to be like, I wouldn't have done it, but, um, yeah, enjoy it while you can, didn't you? Right, so that could be us for today, um, and we'll catch up again in the morning, um, on the way down to pull onto the boat. Thank you very much. Paul Arbor, six o'clock in the morning. We're here. Um, just trying to see if we can see our boat, but I can't see it. But, um, yeah, very pleasant. A few quid there, aren't there? Oh, there's the boats over there, Mick, fishing boats. Have a look. Yeah, we're going to have a little walk around first. And wait for the skipper. Right, 
well, I've got feathers on, so I'm going to uh, go to Mackerel first. Um, pay for bait, really. I'm not sure what they're doing. They're doing some jigging and that for the bird fishing for the bass, but I think it's going to get some tote as well. They get into a big race as well, so get a bit of bait for that. So catch up here when we start fishing. Right, I'll fish the first one anyway. <laughs> bass there. Get in there. <laughs> Can't keep the undersized ones back. Oh yeah, small one. He's had a small one. Not allowed. That's not wrong with that. No. What's the Mick ain't caught nothing yet. Bigger than that. That's okay. Alright, thanks. It's had a bigger one on the boat. It's a nice size one. Yeah, a Put a mouth on these things. So. I want to go take a big bite. That's an undersized one going back. Uh, sun's coming out now. Look. Uh, all right, let's give us a bit of takes round again. We'll drift over it once more, and I think we may lose the tide by then. Uh, we have to go and do something else. I think we need a bit more bait anyway. Right, we've got a couple of hours to kill before the tide turns, so we've, got, we've dropped anchor and uh, we're going to go for a few tope, I think. Yeah, we we'll about an hour or so. Yeah. Then, um... We're safe doing nothing, might as well chuck a line in. But uh, what a day, eh? Nice and calm. Beautiful. Boats in here, isn't it? Pool Harbour. They're just coming in. Um, yeah, while I've got time, it was a uh, good bit of fishing today. Um, we caught some bass, caught some uh, bait first, uh, then we went bait fishing with bass, and, we, and the tide dropped. Uh, so we went fishing for tote. Now, where I saw fish on the Essex coast, tope is quite a prized fish. Um, you know, the, books are, the boats are booked a couple of years in advance for it, um, because it's only a short season. Uh, here on the south coast, uh, they don't seem bothered about them, but um, we had some nice tope, and I had one around about 25 pounds, um, and I videoed it, and, uh, well, the video, I just never pressed the button or something, so it hasn't come out. But, um, yeah, that was great fun. Um, we didn't really catch a much more bait then, so we went lure fishing for the bass. Um, I never had a lot of success really, me and Mick. A few more caught some, but we had plenty of fish. Um, probably, probably 10, 15 what the people have taken home. Uh, and then 
probably another 20 bass uh, and all good sizes but just under the size limit the size limit's uh, 4 42 centimeters 420 mil uh, most of them are just under that so they're good fish anyway they'll go back same as the tote they went back um, they've got no value no food value um, and we have yeah, a couple of dogfish and a couple of bits so yeah it was good um, it's beer time now though we're just pulling in uh, so speak to you later good morning Thursday morning uh, just having to walk around town trying to find a calf and <laughs> there ain't one so we've ended up in Witherspoons but um, that was alright Witherspoons are not so bad are they so we just have a little walk about um, before we go to the cathedral um, and have a look at this quite nice This is the better bit of town, I think. Oh, let's, let's go over right quick. There's Mick having a fag. Um, oh, another pub over here, the Bishop's Mill. I'll give that a go later. It's all right there, Mick, doesn't it? I think we have to give that a go. Green King. Yeah, a bit of a old mill, isn't it? Car park's got me through here, isn't it? Hey? Car park's got me through there. Really? What's through there, then? Oh, uh, yeah. Shopping centre. Oh, is it? <coughs> yeah, um, what was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying. Oh, yeah, where? Oh, yeah, small ones. Yeah, but oh, these towns, they're all the same, aren't they? I mean, it's some beautiful stuff here, but it's all architecture's all equally pickly, isn't it? It's uh, new builds and old builds and bits here, and you know, a bit of it's not all towns, isn't it? A run down. Place is shut and that. Uh, full of pubs, but they're all empty. But to be honest, if you look at that weather spoons, which is over there, um, it's massive and it's quite nice. I'm well, not a fan of weather spoons, but yeah, it's all right. Okay, let's head towards the cathedral. There's something. Uh, that is an old poultry of fish. So, you know, fish and meat, butchers and uh, fishmongers. Uh, it's, it's a clothing shop now. Yeah. Um, it's not to get a butcher anywhere, isn't it? I mean, they're about, but not many. I mean, so many people just use supermarkets now, don't they? Uh, yeah, all these ice streets just change, aren't they? Now bars. I don't know. Just seen this. This is quite interesting. A um, little aqueduct here. Bridge, whatever you call it. But if you look over here, <coughs> the tunnels run at an angle. So the brickworks taken like that uh, and then you've got this detail where it's hanging out because it's going at that angle I must admit it's baffling me I have to really think about that but um, you can see the way the brickwork's going and that's weird isn't it uh, well must be a reason for it so, you know, in all fairness you have to just said I mean this is the road we're staying in it's probably the I don't know say the worst sort of Road in Central Salisbury, really. I mean, that's the old post office here. That's been closed down, pulled it up. I don't know what these, but they're all closed down, pulled it up. So potential for flats and that. Um, we go along here. The kudos here. I'm pretty sure that was an old covered hotel, but they're leaving it open. But, uh, yeah, not that much going on, is there, really? But, uh, this ain't the main bit, but. So they filled the restaurants and a couple of pubs who went in here, they're just, they're just empty. But. Well, this is 1970s, just a block shops underneath. But there's a pretty good example there of a three ring, three centred arch. Um, yeah, it looks alright. Seems to have got the shape right. Well, I've just been speaking to a curator doing a tour. Well, I've just mustered myself in on the tour, really. Uh, and these columns, there's 8,000 columns in this uh, cathedral. That's as many hours there are in a year or something, she said. I didn't quite get it. Anyway, the stone, this is all Purbeck stone from um, down the road there. Uh, and this is all dressed. It's the same stone, they're both the same. And this is dressed and this is polished, all done manually um, with goose fat. And all these little bits in here are what it's made of. They're all mollusks and tiny things um, that were crushed. Because it's limestone, basically. That's what it is. Um, she wants to show me something later. I don't know what that is because I've lost Mick at the moment. But yeah, and uh, yeah, 8,000 of them, and there's as many windows are in this as there is days of the year. Now, a bit of information. 
Right, we're right underneath the spire here, as you can see above me. And I've just learnt a nice bit of information here. Huh? They're out of bonk. It's out of bonk, yeah. It was built um, 70 years after the main cathedral was built. Um, and the foundation, it's on four feet of foundation, which is um, limestone and uh, gravel. Now, gravel's fine um, when it's wet, it's quite stable, but when it's dry, it becomes unstable. <coughs> so we don't know what happened exactly, but if, I, if you look up here, can you see the bend in that? It's buckled. Um, that's nothing to do with the foundation, that is the structure, that is the weight of, um, of, the, of the, the tonnage of that spire up there. So what they did, they built these arches there and there and the same that side to support and stop these columns buckling anymore. And then all these flying buttresses, they were introduced for the same reason. Right, the other thing, <coughs> when this gravel, because this, this place is surrounded by rivers, uh, when this gravel um, dries out, it becomes unstable. Um, so they have to open sluice gates up to uh, make it wet again, and they keep an eye on it. And also, if it gets too wet, they have to close sluice gates uh, to dry it out. Um, and that there man there has got the old gauge rod. And down here, oh no, there, and there's my man there with his gauge rod. He puts that down there, and that way, yeah, thank you very much. Anytime. It's only five pound a go, you know. I'll give you a tenner. <laughs> Too cheap. <laughs> and as you can see, we'll put that down there. You see the. You can see the marks on it. And that's how they used to check the water level. And if it was too dry, they'd let water in. And if it was too wet, they'd let water out. It's not done like that now. Um, I think yeah, it's a bit, it is. Is it? I thought it was a bit more sophisticated. Than that. Oh yeah, I know, but the, the monitoring isn't done not here, is it? No, 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 no. So yeah, I mean... Yeah, big time. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I found it quite interesting. OK, it looks like we'll have to come, well we are, coming back tomorrow to climb up the steeple. It takes about an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half. Uh, and every trip was full up today for a guided tour. And we was, managed to get the last two places tomorrow afternoon, so that's fine, we're all right with that. Um, I was just going to say about the uh, spire itself. Um, because it was built and it went out of bonk. Um, Christopher Wren which was much later, uh, he came here and he surveyed it, and that would have been mid-1600s, wouldn't it, when Christopher Wren was about. Uh, and he deduced that it was 27 inches out of plumb. Um, which ain't that bad, I suppose, I mean, that big is it. I've seen bricklayers do worse on a <laughs> three-bedroom house. But, um, yeah, 27 inches. It's been recently surveyed um, with, you know, modern equipment, lasers and that, and it's still 27 inches. So it hasn't moved, so I found that a bit of settlement. Boy, it wasn't, it was more, it buckled, didn't it? It was more structural. Um, but it hasn't, you know, they rem remedied it, and uh, it's fine now. Right, we're going to go in and have a look at the Magna Carta, and I'll talk you through that in a minute. Oh, right, I've just been in to see the uh, Magna Carta, well, the, 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 uh, the original, or well, one of the originals, which is in this cathedral here, Salisbury Cathedral. You can't actually film it, uh, because the, the parchment thing is just too delicate. Um, but that's what it looks like. It's actually written in uh, legal Latin, um, which was the language of law in the time. Um, most people spoke English and the gentry spoke French. Um, yeah, basically it's just, uh, well, I'll go through it in a minute. Would you reckon it was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, but the big climb is tomorrow. The big climb is tomorrow. Um, yeah, the Magna Carta. Really, I, 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 it's too much involved for me to explain it, and I don't know it all anyway. Um, but basically, King John in 1260 something, um, he created the law as we know it really in this country. That's where we get juries from, uh, the legal system, and what happens a lot when people die, and what happens to the money, and things like that. Um, yeah, 
I did notice of something there. So I read the translation. I'm sure the translation is worth reading. I'm sure it's online somewhere. Um, but it's, if, if a man dies owing money to a Jew, he don't get paid. The wife gets all the money. These people have been persecuted, persecuted for centuries, haven't they? So, uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, tomorrow we'll be climbing up the spire. And uh, yeah, I don't know, we're going fishing later, I think. So yeah, we'll see what happens later. I've just found these. This is obviously uh, a lot of the stuff they're reinstating, the stonework and that. That's modern, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. God knows. They must have people here working full time. They would do, wouldn't they? Full time job. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to the pub. I know I'm not supposed to be here, but this is obviously where it's all done. Done with modern machinery now, though, isn't it? Whether they're doing it the old way. That'd be so, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. well, I won't um, distract him from his work because he looks very intricate. But, um, yeah. Get this bit through the window there, that ornate bit there. Yeah, not sure if that would be for me really. I mean, it's fantastic work, but it's a fact factory job, isn't it? Really, um, avoid and dust all your life. But I suppose it's interesting, artistic, isn't it? This is the old gates into the uh, what we're coming out from, um, like into the complex. And we've got this old building here. Uh, it's late Georgian, late 1600s I'd say, because it's been tuck pointed. Whether it was originally tuck pointed or not, I don't know, but... It's oh, hang on. Have a look. Oh, right. Oh, Latin. School Latin, eh? College of Matrons. That's what that is. And that is... Oh, MD. Uh, 1683, isn't it? 80, 83 or 82? Not sure. 1683 or 1682, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, that was a good guess. Right. I've just found out where they uh, do it all. Um, this is all the new stone being made. And here we have... The Mason's shop. Right. I ain't gonna be allowed in there, am I? So, oh, it's Friday, last day of the fishing. Um, yeah, nothing brilliant. Um, I'm here, fishing this weir pool. It's a beautiful setting though. Rod set up nice, beautiful, watching wildlife, all the birds go by. There's that food right there, which we'll be climbing later today. Um, mixed fish in the backwater over there. Um, He's had a few chub out there actually, I don't know how big. He hasn't sent me any uh, photographic evidence yet. So, uh, he only sends that to me if they're any decent size. But yeah, he's enjoying himself, he's doing all right. Um, yes, I've been here early this morning. I've had an eel, I've caught an eel. Um, I didn't get any video footage of it because I was too busy wrestling it to get the uh, hook out of it. Uh, strong little fuckers. But um, yeah, better than nothing, isn't it? So yeah, I'm sitting out for the big one here, but uh, don't know how much hope. But right, um, I might walk around and see Mick in a minute. And then uh, we're going to probably take off soon. Just go and have something to eat, a couple of beers or something, and then uh, go back to the cathedral. So um, yeah, I'll see you in a minute. It's some height, isn't it? Trouble with this camera. 
Right, we're off. We're climbing to the, the top of the steeple. And I've got to shut the door in it. Too. No, no. Door shut. Right, it's going to take two hours, this is, or, you know, 90 minutes. Uh, I've got a full battery in the GoPro, which I know is not enough, but then I won't be filming it all anyway. Uh, just the highlights. Tell you what, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> the timber here, the oak that you see, is the original oak, most of it, the steel bits being replaced, original oak uh, in its original position. And that's important when we get up into the nave roof. It's the original oak, but it's been moved around. This is how it would have been. Um, if they wanted a curved bit of oak like this bit over here, they would have gone out into the forest and found a tree with a branch that was curved like that. Oak was fairly valuable at the time because uh, they built ships with it, bridges, big buildings like this. And these big bits of oak would have come from a tree that's 200 years old perhaps. So it wasn't a material that you could quickly regrow uh, another batch of oak. So it was a very valuable material. And they could, um, they could join it, so this joint here. Um, it's got some later Victorian bolts in it, but the medieval carpenters could have made a joint like that and joined those two bits of wood to be as uh, strong as a uh, long bit of wood. Built this using wooden scaffolding, and to stabilise the scaffolding, they would have run bits of the scaffolding in through these holes. And when they took them down here, because they didn't think anyone was going to see it, they didn't bother to fill the holes in here. Those same holes would have been on all the cathedral walls, but where you could see them, they would uh, put a bit of stone in and finish it off to make it look nice. This fox's head was done by one of our stonemasons. It's uh, called a masterpiece. It's probably where the word masterpiece comes from when you use a very fine piece of work. It's a piece of uh, carving you do at the end of your apprenticeship called master stonemason to show them that you have the skills to be a mason. And we think this piece of wood here, this pillar, might also be a carpenter's masterpiece. You'll notice that it's been finished off much more finely than the other wood up here, with uh, uh, some carving at the base. A we, we suspect it might have been a carpenter demonstrating that he could do this carving, and they got it up here, they did it up here, because if he made a mess of it, it wouldn't matter. Uh, because it was out of sight of people, they thought. Okay. Yeah. That's some view of it, isn't it? Up here. Amazing, isn't it? Forum level was the original oak in the original place. This is the original oak, but they moved it, rebuilt the roof. The Tudors did it, we don't know why, um, but if you look, say, up to the right, you can see the old joints uh, when the roof was in a different configuration. As I said, that the oak was very valuable, so they, they reused it, they didn't get rid of it. Uh, any people here who are roof beam aficionados? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. This is a, a double queen post roof. Yeah. Uh, a queen post is that rectangle there, and there's another small one on top of it, so it's a double queen post roof. We don't think that was probably the original uh, roof uh, arrangement, but that's what the Tudors did. Uh, I'll, I'll explain one possible theory that we have about why they did it when we get up the other end. Um, <clears throat> what else can we see? You see these diagonal boards with the, uh, running up this side? Those are sarking boards. The grey material you can see between them is the lead on the roof. So you can see the underside of the lead, it just sits on those boards. The more traditional way to have sarking boards is on 
the left hand side here horizontal, um, but the lead wears on that side. Um, right, we're going up here now. So, <coughs> if you'd like me to show you some examples. I've just hit another party. Yeah, if you want to go, I'm going to show you I don't think these are original, there must be another way up, because they're wood. These ain't 800 years old. There's a hell of a lot of information uh, the guy's given us, which I can't just film, it's ridiculous. I mean, all I can suggest is that they come and do the trip, because it's really interesting, uh, on the construction side anyway. Right, we're nearly at the top of this bit. I don't know what's up here. That was so and so. They're really harder coming down, don't they? Yeah, we're at this stage here, and uh, this ironwork was putting in the 1300s because they only got this far. And they left it, so they needed this to stabilise it all uh, before they carried on up here. I'd love to see the scaffold and the uh, the tower crane they had <laughs> 800 years ago. How did they do it? Right, uh, this is a bit claustrophobia. This is the last staircase, we're going up there and it's uh, quite tight apparently. This was built in the 70s by uh, some carpentry apprentices. Um, the, the old stone ones are in the corner there somewhere. Um, but they're so tight, obviously people were smaller in them days, weren't they? So, uh, yeah, fat people can't get up there. <laughs> ah, well, we've left Weatherspoons. Uh, we're going to another pub now. Um, it's the only place we're going to get somewhere to eat now. Um, I'm not doing McDonald's, that don't, uh, that's not a bit of me. So yeah, we've got the uh, the Ox Row in. We've had there before, it's alright. Uh, I've got fish and chips, it's Friday, might be fish and chips Friday, isn't it? Okay, let's see where we get on. Okay, we're in Weatherspoons. Uh, happy Mick here, look, smile Mick. Yeah, no fucking food again. Uh, yeah, the uh, reduced menu in Weatherspoons because of the heat. <laughs> I don't fucking get it, yeah. do you know what I mean? How does that, that, that happen? You're in a kitchen anyway, it's always hot and it's air conditioned. But anyway, we're not going to argue about it. We've um, I've got one of them, that makes me happy. And we're going to find somewhere else to eat. Anyway, let me tell you a story about last night. Last night we got a bit drunk and we were walking over and outside Tesco's there was an unfortunate person, a lady, um, living on the street. <coughs> was she? Uh, living on the street. Uh, and Mick felt a bit sorry for her and gave her a fiver. I had to go in the shop and get something. But when I came out, I didn't realise Mick was still talking to her anyway. So I, our house is only 50 yards up the road. So I rung him because he weren't there and I never had a key. You know, so that's our Tesco. So he's, he's come back down. And I said to him, I thought he was going to bring that girl back. He went, well, he said, I'm on who? He said, but, you know, just give, let her have a bath and that, and if she wants to keep on the sofa, let her. <laughs> he said, but I need to ask you first. I went, well, that's, that's fair enough. I said, you know, I'd help anyone out. Don't worry about that. There's no skin off my nose. Anyway, I've gone upstairs for a, to go to the toilet, come back down, he's gone, isn't he? So 
so I think, fucking hell, I know where he's gone, he's going to come back with her, isn't he? Uh, anyway, he come back on his own. I said, you went, you went up there and uh, offered, didn't you? Like, you know, she didn't have a bath in that here, shower and that, and he went, I did. But she won't come because she has to, the council come and inspect her at 4am in the morning because she's waiting for her hostel and if she's not there she won't, she won't get a place in the hostel and he ain't only give her another fucking forever oh my god <laughs> that's why it's miserable it don't matter about it if you've got wealth put it about <laughs> yeah she's wealthier than you now Mick oh anyway well I'm going to drink this aspirals we'll find somewhere to eat <laughs> Fucking thing off. Right, what happened today? Well, we climbed up the cathedral. Um, I've done the video and I've done it on this um, GoPro and I ain't got a clue how to use it, so we'll see how it comes out. I'm not sure. Um, hopefully, it'll be okay. I might have to do a bit of edit editing on it, which I can't do either, but we'll get around it. Um, yeah, I can't give too much information on it. It's, you know, the guide was brilliant. And uh, there's just so much, you know, to take in. Uh, all I can say is, if you're ever down this way, do do the trip. If you're a bit of an anorak like me and likes old buildings and that, and are interested in how they done things like 800 years ago, it really is good. Um, right, where are we going now? Oh, I thought you were going to keep out. It's the barbers. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Ah, oh, mate. Right, mixed buying tonight, right? And he wanted a. Uh, he said we'd go to a Turkish restaurant, which is basically just a kebab. Anyway, we've got here. Look, the fucking barbers. So, right, <laughs> you knob. Yeah, we got Witherspoons. Witherspoons, all right, anyway. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're going to Witherspoons now. But it's still going now. Uh, oh. We got back today and uh, we, we had some shepherd's pie left over. Um, what we got from Mick's sister the other day. So we was up at four o'clock this morning fishing and uh, so I got back about, I don't know, 12 o'clock, had a couple of beers and done the shepherd's pie. So I'll go down to the chip shop, get some chips. I was like, chips and me shepherd's pie. And uh, I found one, got there and they're Chinese. It's not a Chinese takeaway, it's a, a fishing chip shop run by Chinese. and. I couldn't understand her, she couldn't understand me. Anyway, I ordered chips, two gherkins, a saveloy, and some beans. I've got home, I've got chips. What do I have? Chips? I've got saveloy, didn't I? Yeah, and, a, and a buttered roll. Fucking hell. <laughs> Eight pounds seventy as well. That was the dearest chips I ever bought. Uh, yeah, so that's that. I'll, t I'll tell you about a mix episode last night later. <laughs> See you later. This floor wouldn't have been here. So this you could have stood on the floor and the you look right up to that roof. And that's why they carved all this area. Because obviously it's a bit redundant doing all this work. Turns out that um where we was fishing this morning, um is an eel trap. You know, where the weir was and that that old derelict structure. <coughs> it's quite ironic, considering I caught an eel there today. Yeah. That's the old winch there. What they used to prep the materials up. Um, this was reinstated in the 1700s, as you just said. Um, it took about 35 minutes to uh, get a pallet of firm stone up here. And there's the new one that they're using now. Right, we're going out on the east side. All right. Well, so yes, yeah, so we'd see it. I don't, know. I don't know if you can see that, people, but over the back there, 
you can see that bit of river and that red roof, that's the, the weir uh, we was fishing at this morning. I don't know how to um, zoom in on this camera yet, I'm still learning. There's a view north. North. Right. Looking north. Can we just move that up a little bit, please? Okay, great. Yeah, so we're looking north. Those of you who have done your history will know about Old Sarum, the flat topped hill just to the left of centre in the on the horizon. That's where the first two cathedrals were um, before they moved down here. It was a Norman castle up there. So the whole of the cathedral close is enclosed by a wall. You had to get permission from the king to build a wall like that because it smacked of it being a fortification. Um, and the king didn't like barons and people in the through field of their own castles. To get permission. Um, I mentioned to you we didn't have a peal of bells in the tower here, in the Rina Belfry. You may be able to see the, remake, the, the foundation markings uh, down on the ground to the left. There's some yeah, schoolgirls walking across it and they're just coming to the edge of the belfry, three girls. Uh, but you, in dry weather you can see the foundations there. And if you look down nearer the cathedral, just in that point of the V where the paths are, you should see the marks of the old graves in the grass. The shadows yeah, of the old see. graves. The little uh, right by coming out. Blimey. Oh god, I'm no good at heights, am I? Yeah. So we're looking west. Uh, you've got the curves of the river Avon around. Who are we fishing? How deep do you think the foundations are? Four feet. Yeah, what have you been reading? <laughs> no, I went on the tour yesterday. <laughs> because over the years, that river has laid down a bank of sand and gravel about 30 feet under the sea. So the cathedral just has four foot stone foundations that rest on that It's the only place you can film it. 50 plus metres of spire above us. That's a long way up here to the top, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. So they would have built the spire principally from the inside um, with a scaffolding like this one. This isn't the original scaffolding, so it would have been a different scaffolding, but probably something like that. Uh, they built the spire from the inside until they got about 10 metres from the top and then it would get too narrow to, to be comfortable inside. So they then put the scaffolding on the outside of what they built and built the last 10 metres from the outside. Um, they would have um, used metal, bits of metal like this. Um, where they had a join in, in the stone, they would cut a groove in it and drop this into it, cover it with lead to try and stop it rusting because uh, it was iron. Uh, fortunately that didn't work so a lot of these had to be removed because when they rust they expand and crack so um, when you go um, up to the little door 10 meters from the top you can climb outside like the uh, clock of the, yes. um, the clock of the work goes up there to inspect the structure but also to replace the bulb with the red aviation light that's right on the top of the spire um, I think most Blue Peter presenters have been up there as well. <laughs> John Noakes and Co. Um, so they built this, that's around 1300, 1320. Took the scaffolding down, and then about 1365, there was a huge storm across uh, Europe, and it damaged the spire. So they put the scaffolding back in, they repaired it, and then left it here. And there's a very good reason why they left it here. Because at the top of this wooden scaffolding, there's a metal pole that goes up to the capstone, the stone right on the top. And if you look, you'll see that the scaffolding, the, this wooden scaffolding, is resting on the stonework at this first ledge level. If you look further up, it's not resting on the spire. But that um, metal rod at the top is pulling down on the capstone, so it's compressing the whole spire. <laughs> using the weight of all this wood to pull 
pulled out on the, um, the top. So the whole spar is in compression. And that makes it much stronger for the sway. It's being held very rigidly. So they left it here for that reason to act as a weight to pull down on it. Um, so I mentioned to you about in the 1980s they had to replace these decorative bands of stone. Well, it was a bit of a problem because they were structural. They were holding up the spire above uh, where they, they were. So what they had to do was put this uh, scaffolding on. Can you see uh, metal scaffolding, uh, like upside down V, meta Vs? Uh, just up here. So what they did was they got a, the ring at the top of those upside down Vs is bolted to the spire above the band. The ring at the bottom is bolted to the spire below it. And because they're upside down Vs, if you pull the legs together, they'll lift up. As, as the legs get close together, they'll lift up the top band. So literally, they could lift up the spire above that scaffolding, take the weight off the uh, band of stone that was uh, damaged, take that out, put new stone in, and then gently lower the spire down here. <laughs> and that one you can see, the first one you can see, was, has to hold up 250 tonnes of spire. And there are two more further up. You can probably see the spire. How do they jack it up? Because if you've got the legs like that of yeah. the V, if you bring the legs together, oh, right. yeah, yeah. it kind of lifts yeah. up. Um, mm. so, right, this is the last staircase. We're going up there and it's uh, quite tight apparently. This was built in the 70s by uh, some carpentry apprentices. Um, the, the, the old stone ones are in the corner there somewhere. Um, but they're so tight, obviously people were smaller in them days, weren't they? So, uh, yeah, fat people can't get up. <laughs>